Hey pilots, Drain Man here, and today I have a very special video. As you can see by the title, oh look at that prop, don't pay attention to that. As you can see by the video, today we are going to learn how to fix this very unfortunate situation. Anybody who rocks an Immortal T knows all about this all too well. And every single time it comes near your props, it's game over. So today, I'm going to show you guys how to fix this the improper way. Alright, so first thing we're going to do is we are going to go ahead and get this prop out of our way. Alright, Pod, so the very first thing we need to do is we need to get rid of this old piece of heat shrink or silicone, whatever this is exactly. We're going to get rid of this first. So get yourself some scissors or some wire cutters or whatever and then I want you to get in there and cut that out of your way. Or just rip it off. Once that is off, the next thing we need to do is we need to straighten these back out because right now they are a hot mess. They look like my hair Sunday morning. Wait, I don't have any hair. If I had hair, that's what it would look like Sunday morning. So let's go ahead and straighten those out. And a cool little trick I like to do is take a pair of scissors or anything like that. And I will put it under and I will use my thumb and I'll pull on it. Now you're not going to get them perfect because obviously they're just not going to be perfect. But the idea is just to straighten them out a little bit. Alright, we're starting to look a little better already. Alright, once you have it nice and what I would like to call straighter than it was, then our idea is going to be to go ahead and twist all of these together. And that's going to start by spreading them out a little bit. And they should all look like this kind of. Right about now, you should be looking worse than when you started. That's how you know you're on the right track. See what we got? And then go ahead and get two hands in there and kind of go ahead and wrap them around. This part is no fun. And you should start to look like this. This is the idea that we are going for. And yours can be neater and cleaner or whatever. The next thing we're going to do is we are going to do the same concept except we're going to use a pair of pliers or something that you may have laying around and you're going to twist them up again. And you can be a little rough with it, you're not going to hurt it. You can also pinch and then spin your plier all the way around. And that'll also help get you nice and straight. And this is kind of the idea you're going for right here. If yours looks like this, well then you're in pretty good shape because it's looking way better than it did. The next thing I want you to do is go ahead and heat up your iron and get your solder ready. And you're going to go ahead and kind of do a little bit of tack welding, if you will. And I would start towards the back. And you don't want to get it too hot because you don't want to damage it and then kind of just paint it on just like that. Now we're only going to go a little bit of the way. Oh, that's hot. We're just going to go a little bit of the way and then we're going to let it cool down. If you've got a wet sponge, feel free to use that to cool it back down. All right, once she's cooled back down, we're going to give another twist or two. Because now the base is being held together for us by the solder. All right, now we're going to go at it again, do a little more tack welding. And there you go. Okay, so now you're soldered up and it's looking pretty good. What I want you to do now, because if you're using the same solder as I am, you have some flux in there. We don't want to leave that all over it, so get yourself some type of cotton swab or something. I use these, they're great. And then you're going to wipe that extra flux off. 
just like that. Nothing fancy. If you have one of these, you should be good to go. I use this size, this is the same size I use on all of them when I repair them. So I'm going to use this size again. Sometimes they're thicker than others, depending if you use too much solder or whether you had a bad, you know. Because some people start worse than others, you know. If yours is like, you know, yours is going to be bigger than mine was. So you probably wouldn't have gotten it this small, and that's okay. All right, go ahead and wiggle that on. All right, we're going to go ahead and slide that over. You're welcome to do one here, one here, one here, whatever, whatever makes you happy. Me, I'm going to go right to the edge. That's all I need. And then go ahead and hit it with a little bit of heat. If you don't have a heat gun and all you have is a lighter, that'll work too. Alright guys, literally that simple. Now my Immortal T is back to action. Look at it. You can hardly tell it happened. Okay, you can tell it happened. But when you're flying, you're not going to be able to tell it happened. And I'm going to tell you one other thing too. It's probably twice as strong as it was before this happened. For the guys that are concerned about range, if you're a long ranger and you're really concerned about range, you need to just buy another antenna for five bucks and don't be trying to repair it. If you're a freestyle pilot like me and you don't really go that far, this is way more than efficient. We had about 25 miles or so that we were able to go on this antenna and now that this has happened, I don't know, we might only be able to go 20 miles. I hope that this was helpful and it helped you guys out and you guys enjoyed the video. I'll see you on the next one.